The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. It's okay to throw up of his own. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! to me. Come. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Go What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. Kuno's got this! If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. They pay you no heed, or pretend not to notice you. The rake! You should throw the rake at him, Goon! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. The fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f***s, Kuno! He says we're fucking each other! All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. Irregular speech patterns, overconfidence. Could this kid be on drugs? This warrants further investigation into this Kuno. Shitload pig. Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. The usual being. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make the Kuno sing into the Popo phone. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you. Looks like you're a Fagari now. 
Whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. Your test and coon get lost. F this trash container, there's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case. But still. Maybe you're prioritizing it. The loot. Inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Can I help you? Absolutely. You wait and see, cafeteria manager. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. Your body is ready, sire. What thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. He hates the union, but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers, and it doesn't matter. I don't have to explain myself to you. We should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business.
He wasn't pan-fried. He was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do with... Fine. Okay. The kitchen is closed until 1 p.m. because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. What? Hmm. You feel like you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. Can I help you? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rag. Thank you for clearing that up. Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Prod at him and find out. Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revachol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard.
Krasmazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, Mazovian thought, or Mazovianism. What are we talking about? Was this not about the trash container? We should return to this theory at a later time, officer. This here was about the trash container. Yes. Sir, I'm sorry the RCM is having financial trouble, but it's not this establishment's problem. What for, Mazov? Are you planning to nationalize my trash container? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simp- Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below, and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. You see, milk, a box falls into pieces in your... Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. 
As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverine odor is faint. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar mark, blue jeans. Pocket, empty or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too, a white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or... that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Not really. All we know is, the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes, written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? It is, look. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? Boring. Try dangerous. You should do a thorough inventory of that. Be sure some has not fallen into the hands of the RCM's enemies, organized crime, or worse. Official notes sometimes contain informants' names, even undercover operatives. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the Interact tab to read your paperwork. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all.
It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Thank you, waterlogged ledger, for spelling it out for us. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. Still wet, the toilet paper, I mean kitchen tissue, sorry, peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. What? That thing. It's an allergen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal allergen watermarks. Mine too. The lieutenant would rather not have you rummaging around, looking for the lights in his vehicle. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Work, strife, Poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I prefer a normal caseload. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. 
one that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Others appear more lighthearted. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close, You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our it's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right? Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was... I pray. Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. There is, for precisely, one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Sadly, the letter only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. Onto the paper, with a brash free hand, uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done it seems to say, and you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. No, actually. Any ideas? Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted this out. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB41120117 The Next World Mural. Why, yes, your precinct number is 41. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. That is improbable. It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. Three, the topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work.
The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copier paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Mm. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know, Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachol East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there too. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. It smells of chewing gum, apricot flavored. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card, looped round letters in a woman's hand. A young woman in her twenties, there is care effort, and a smile, you think, although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Harry, it begins, you're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Throw it away, please. Your hand shakes holding the card. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. Sparks fall like snow from the bow collector. A streetcar distance him. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. Whoa. Okay. Hey guys.
the hell? There is nothing. Again. Nothing sad, brother. No treachery. Just blackout. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. That's me. Blue eyes. That's me. Who is what? He speaks of the sickening longing, the unwell emotion. Even in the darkness, he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrows slipping in the water. Slimy. The cool when you're dead, brother. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. Yeah, man. What was that about? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape. Its lack of beauty was not the problem. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules. No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. Yes, they're pouring something on you. It's in you, and it... Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. The water is cold, silvery, the stuff of life itself, as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? That does sometimes happen. He replies with such understanding, it's as if the burnt-out ruins of the past were an occupational hazard. Hath a leaked foot for cops. You dropped this. Are you okay to proceed? Good. The Ledger of Failure and Hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your held slot for skill bonuses. Find it under the Tools tab in your inventory. It 
It's the letter you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board, with the permeable's drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Cuprice Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. All right, ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious carriage. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The Rouseman gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Kinema comes to life with a whiny growl. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier, it's robust, weatherproof and well made. Police issue, blue, lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is, Revachol West. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Let me see. Right here. Oh yes. Coal City. Le Royaume. The Burnt Out Quarter. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. The first row has 18 dots. The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. You count 216 perforations. Considering that nice, large number, a wave of pride washes over you. Though you can't say why, precisely. The last row has three perforations. That's it. 
Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Cool. I'm glad you joined us. Not a lot of money in doom crying. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. It's quite a lot even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. What's it feel like to kill a man, Mr. McCoy? A young woman asked the man across the desk from her. Honestly, babe, says John McCoy, crossing his ankles over said desk. I don't feel anything anymore. It's just like brushing my teeth. I do it once or twice a week and don't really think about it. There's no trace of guilt in his voice. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Yes. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. Everyone has their own method of coping, some more effective or self-destructive than others. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Anything's better than annihilating yourself with drugs and alcohol. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. The lieutenant nods. Right. I'll go turn off the lights.
Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel. The frequency tableau lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line, the soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Of course. What is the number, Officer? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-2908. Received. Hold on, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... not... Why not? What? No, why would you even think that? Please, don't bring Gar into this. It's none of your business. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. No, not me. No, sorry, I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the Dock Workers Union. Words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. Her voice is resigned and weak. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well... By the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble.
You do? Oh, what else can I do for you? Yeah, go on. No, I don't know. It wasn't me. I haven't been out there since. I was terrified of the stench and, and the corpse. Well, you tried to jam it down the toilet, sir, clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Rags when she was still working there. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skua thing happened. It just made me want to quit. The stuffed bird, the great skua. You threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. It was a pretty bird, there since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. We call her Scotty. There's genuine sadness in her voice. Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I... I hate it now. We Go On by the O.O. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant. And I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about the end of all times and how everyone is a piece of shit. And then, I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like guard. I really do. No, I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. It was just bad timing, with the corpse and all that. There's a pause. You can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. I should have told him, maybe. Um, okay, but... Please don't mess it up. Please don't take out your gun or something. All, all sorts of things. From disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. 
Which one would that be? Sad? I think the one you mean is the smallest church in San Sans. Richard, that right up. Interesting. You still have to find it, however. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Just a second, officer. Ten two, ten five. This is forty first. Uh, come in. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You've got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Ten eighteen. State your message, sir. Ten nine. Over. Ten four message received. This is a very serious situation. I need. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Tenfor, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got... What's going on? Super cop here, lost. He lost his... His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain So- Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? No. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. Don't sweat it, Bratan! You don't need a gun to have fun. We can still have fun. It's not all over. Ten nine, coming officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Lying over the phone. It's easy. Just say it like it's the truth, and then it becomes it. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it, and fast. We can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance? Over. Ten four, I hear you. I don't have the authority. To... What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking? I don't think. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink. All right. Um, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. He says it's important to. He isn't getting a red cent. Request denied, sir. Over. Anything else, sir? Over. 
What show that? Eighteen kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier. Around a dozen cops, the small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact, and it's not good. He's lost his badge. He seemed confused, delirious even. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger-fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to- Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Mac's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold off the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Hello again, sweetie.
can I help you? Wait, what? But what about the bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. You broke the skewer! I assure you it was him. It's as if he can't decide whether to be angry or relieved that it was you. Again. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. A symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. All right. Did she say anything else? About me, you know? D did she say anything about me? Really? I, I should... I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? Or can you give him a moment? Somehow you realize this is not going to net you any professional discounts. Already he's reverting back to defensive. Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you, anyway. Yes? The door is closed. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you. He doesn't like where this is going. Bed is cold and not but
there he still is, looking right through you. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Me? I am just a gardener. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. As you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get... Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. She shifts in her seat awkwardly. Of course. Where to? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more the harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast. Just coast. There's a li It's just water. No, actually. I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. In the West is the miracle. No problem. Of course. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. There he still is, looking right through you, with his wife. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar. You feel a great force ringing from your stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet, and your throat stings from the stomach acid. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she used salts for... If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the Frit store nearby. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Guess. No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. No, you don't. Come on. You'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. 
Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copotype from sorry to anything. Oh, you know, Apocalypse, Superstellar, the advanced interesting cop, liquid shadow cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, here we go. Wow. Okay. Fuck off. Maybe we were wrong about you then. Hello again, officer. How are things? Sure. I'm done with them. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Now does the win right now. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder.
I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. I think I've lost my sense of A white lie. Not being hungover helps too. No. This is a two-man assignment, because it needs two officers to complete. You need to get your shit together. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. It's almost one, then we can go in the kitchen. Sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Sweet Lord, a whole hour. And you haven't thought about rum and lemonade in all that time. You've truly extinguished all trace of yourself. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. What happened, man? You used to be cool. <laughs> Go get your boring normal person drink then. Get your drink on and your act together. I help you?
Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. slumber. Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from, into the primordial darkness. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. It's the letter you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. With the per- 
It takes about half an hour to piece one together, using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. Cause of failure, rent too high. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. Did anyone ask you what you believe in, man with the smelly toilet ledger? What do you want to tackle next? Or are we done? Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sudden... Volumetric ship compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Rivershall West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. Hobocop. Technically, you wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar? The old l'assommoir? To the pier or the sewers? To Le Royaume, where for 300 years they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt bourbon. Then fight the Ardamakan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchres. The secrets of the city are all yours. At last.
you see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Eccentric. But okay, I suppose we could look into it. As a... He's not bothered by your eccentricity. He seems genuinely intrigued himself. It's hardly a side investigation. You already have a name for it. If you say so, Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I love those. Oh, yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just a frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So, I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes?
she thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. No huh, this button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boom box that says, Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here, then use it to win her back. Everything you pick out seems faded, chipped, and sad somehow. Most of them are just broken toys. Yes, buy something nice, a figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks. The kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Franco-Nigerian knight. I used to be very serious about these guys. A long, long time ago. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers, 
They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. Which ones? Ah, royalist soldiers from the time of the revolution. The uniforms are painted a bit too brightly, I suppose. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels. You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Maybe. He seems to have his own take on the conflict played out in perpetuity by these toys. Might be interesting to find out what it is. Sorted floor and table lamps. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to us. This would make quite a statement in your living room. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers? You All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. It keeps me entertained. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh, God. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. You are... We've came here, too. That just sounded really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizens' militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. You weren't quiet. Yourself, officer. You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and that you need the money. 
When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. No apologies necessary, officer. She didn't seem like a policeman, although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... obsessive. But I was just happy. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia. And now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. You're right that she could cast aspersions on the Force. We have to find out. My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Of course. I doubt it, but I can try and on. I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of... He doesn't know anything. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Let me have a look. Don Batiste's summer dinghy rates is 31. What a pleasant time that was. So, what do you want to know? Price? I can give you 320 for it. Sure, I can keep it behind the counter for a week, but only if you pawn it right now. A pin from 31 ought to be priced at 310, but I added another 10 cents just to be nice. Sure thing. So, do you want to sell anything? Another time, perhaps. Okay. He definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it and many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. Looking at his weirs, talking to him, that might give you more clues. A guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud.
Good day to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershall. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a waterlock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Sure thing. Want some too, officer? Why not? There, he still is, looking right through you, with his white eyes. The body below... Ha, ha, ha. Again. The corpse laughs at you, pus dripping from its mouth. You will never be able to hold it in. It's always too much. Every time it happens, it gets worse and worse. There's nothing more to throw up now. All that's left is crying and convulsing dryly at the same time. Officer, you just need to be stronger. Learn to keep it in long enough for us to work. There's nothing else to do. You can open this white check again by going to your character sheet and spending a skill point to upgrade your endurance. Gain new skill points by exploring and completing side tasks. Relax. It's okay if you don't make it today. The bloated corpse isn't going anywhere.
The tear machine stands in the corner. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big frit. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. She pops her raspberry-flavoured bubblegum and nods. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half-smile. I don't know. Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store? I think they think that the extra tea makes it funkier. It doesn't. The story goes that normal Fritta with two teas, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frit does. She scrunches up her face into an expression of consummate adolescent skepticism. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here, okay? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so not really. Um, no, I didn't know him at all. I don't know, really long? Uh-huh. She looks up from her magazine. Yes, what we have is there, in the medicine cabinet. Go take a look yourself. The tear machine stands in the- Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear, you know. You find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there, somewhere. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf. Welcome to Rivachol. Don't you? Every school of th it's what he means is fixation on the Rivacholian nation 
makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome. I... But you see... Silence. The air between. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. You do make a cute cup. The lieutenant. You sense slight embarrassment for the outburst. Or is it pride? Impossible to tell. Whatever you say, officers. Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a... The strike? <laughs> I'd have been at it for... Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick... Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of... Look, as detective, I come from a long line of... Oh, I'm here to pick up a load of fucking apples, man. Just regular. Koiko may be another derogative. For a person from Grad, you think? Yep, it's one of their main exports. In fact, Yekokata is a desolate wasteland whose name literally translates to Zone of Ecological Catastrophe. It features no scenic vistas and supports virtually no plant or animal life. Yeah? Says who? Then, I guess they grow apples somewhere else. You can never really tell with those koikois. They are... He means the people living in Grad. Yeah, you know, Gradniks, Gradvolk, those degenerates from Grad. Hey, if the name and description fit by the very grace of nature, who am I to say otherwise? Uh, did you miss the part where I said they aren't here yet? Besides, even if- Relax. You've got all you can get here. He probably doesn't even know what he's hauling, even if it is something unsavory. So he'd remain unaccountable. Uh, it's- not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the top. I'm not just racist. Look, I've... People who've studied these things said that are you. So, lately we Occidentals have experienced an... The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the... Cultural victory? What is this then? It's what the kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses. And the others too, on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any motetos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. They say so themselves. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen? If people don't stay in their birth place, you might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics, leading to a... Don't push your luck, Runt. Scab? You're hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of... What brings the RCM here, to the Wild North? Come to see the Strife?
murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. Of course, Policia. Should we? He's nice. I don't like nice. He didn't do it. It's the truth. Lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The title reads, Man from Eelmdal in the Lost City of the Pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your Nothing, her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray like lead. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? I just told you why.
Not a good track record of mental health in that family. What did he do? You have no idea. High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your memory trouble. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up. You sure are, my man. It's the jam. It's a traffic. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo. Feels like for Mazut is an antiquated term for heavy fuel oils. This man has a barely suppressed performative streak. Or he. Yeah, imagine. Behind the laugh, however. A touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise... It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological... Ask for his conclusion. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Some pretty wild... I've heard talk... Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. They want to keep... He doesn't blame them. But he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else? Us lorry drivers. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag. Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal... Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. Ha! No, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This hollow cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits, neck... They usually get shipped to Grad and the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the ape. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. In his eyes, an our familiar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. Excuse me? Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way. Waiting all the way in Diora. 
And here I am stuck in this shit. The aura of the seven seas. It's on the other end. What's it like? Good. <sighs> what is that what it is? This feeling? I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. But, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. And I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Don't be a stranger.